Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. And today I'll be going back to the beginning of G.I. Joe's roots and taking a look at the standard trooper of the line, the G.I. Joe Infantry Trooper, the 1982 Grunt, as well as the 1983 Swivel Arm Battle Grip reissue of Grunt. Now, like all uh, 1982 series of characters, he makes his first appearance in the Marvel comic run in issue number one. You would think that he would make his first cartoon appearance in the very first G.I. Joe miniseries, 1983, A Real American Hero five-parter, but he doesn't. Instead, he makes his first appearance in the second miniseries in 1984, the five-part miniseries, The Revenge of Cobra, in the second part. Grunt has the interesting distinction of leaving the G.I. Joe team in both comic books and the cartoon series. In the comic books, he basically retires from the G.I. Joe team in issue 55 in order to continue his education and basically goes back to college. In the uh, cartoon series, in um, the 1985 first season episode, the second part of Worlds Without End, he basically stays behind in an alternate reality. Uh, in the cartoon, however, um, because the series actually doesn't, um, doesn't pick up after 1987, we have to wait until the Deke series uh, returns Grunt in 1991. However, it's not explained how he comes back from an alternate reality. Whereas in the comic books, he returns in 1991 as an infantry squad leader. Admittedly, Grunt is a little on the plain side. However, you have to keep in mind that the other figures in the series were all specialists in a very narrow field. Whereas Grunt as the infantry trooper was a general assault trooper. I believe Hasbro intended uh, young kids at the time to army build uh, this figure. In other words, buy multiples of him to pretend that the other multiples were different people. And that's what collectors actually still do. In fact, even if they're not collecting Grunt, but other uh, basic infantry troopers as background figures, thanks to Grunt, they're now nicknamed Green Shirts. Now, Grunt comes with his M16 rifle. A standard helmet, which was the same sculpt as a lot of the 1982 and some 1983 and 84 figures had. As well as a combat backpack, which uh, is admittedly rather small. In 1983, we got a swivel arm battle grip update. And as you can see, he can now hold his M16 with two hands. Another thing is the waist piece was also changed to something much slimmer. Another thing which is uh, a little harder to find is the fact that the backpack pegs are a little different from 1983 to the 1982 figures. 1982 backpack pegs are a little uh, shorter and certainly a bit rounder, perhaps even a little bit thicker, whereas the pegs on the 1983 figures were a bit narrower and quite a bit longer. Now, on some figures with backpacks that have, have this change, it's almost impossible to switch them out because, well, the smaller peg is really, really loose. And the thicker peg is almost impossible to get into the hole. Now, Grunt was pretty much replaced by the other infantry trooper in 1985, 
Footloose. One interesting little piece of trivia is that Grunt was the very first of the new G.I. Joes to be revealed to the public. Much like the Action Soldier of 1964, he was supposed to represent the U.S. Army. Now, I understand a lot of people don't like the way uh, Grunt's face is molded and by extension zaps and, and grand slams, but I think this sort of uh, older looking face and cocked eyebrows really gives him more of a personality than the other characters have because their faces are very neutral. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Thank you for watching my video, and stay tuned for next week to see another 1980s G.I. Joe Toy Review. See you then!